everybody, welcome back to another video. I've got a pouch with some supplies in it. I have an aqua brush, I have a palette, a cloth to wipe off my brush. I grabbed that, I don't know why, but... <laughs> um, I have a sketchbook, and I also have some new... Um, these are the Mangaka markers. Or, um, they're basically a fine liner, and they come in a 005, a 01, a 03, a 05, and then there's also a, it says a fine brush. It's kind of like a, like a fude, but like a soft fude brush. Um, so I have those. I'll just pop those out of there. These are something new. I had a credit on Amazon. And so I, I've, I've wanted to try these. There's a YouTube channel called Doodle Date, and they've used these a lot. And um, they do all these art um, channel, uh, you know, three marker challenges and stuff like that. And they use these a lot. And, and I liked the look of them. So I thought I'd give them a try. But what we have in here are, these are my Arteza real brush pens. They're very similar to the Zig uh, clean color brush pens. Um, what you can see is they look like a brush, but it's like a bunch of hairs. And um, yeah, they're, they're really cool. It's, it's almost like the tip is like a tip of this. Uh, it's got individual hairs um, instead of like an actual, like a brush pen, like a Tombow or a Copic or an Ohuhu or something like that. Um, and this is, they sent me these years ago. Um, and I think it was like a 48 set, of, including a, um, I think there's one that is just like alcohol or like a blender marker, they call it. I don't know. There's a ton of them in a pretty good color. Oh, and it also came with an aqua brush as well because these are a water soluble um, pen. So you can use them like watercolor, hence why I have this little palette out. Um, when I first got these, I was using them uh, I was doing a lot of like Winnie the Pooh and cartoon character stuff and I used them to do like you know the strawberry shortcake characters and a bunch of that type of stuff and I pulled them out the other day and I used them to color in a coloring book. I did some coloring in this book with them. Um, See, those are all alcohol markers. You can see how they bleed through. That's colored pencil. That's fine liners. That's a bunch of fine liners from Arteza. Those are mild liners, mild liners, alcohol markers. These are the Viviva watercolor sheets. Colored pencils. That's Viviva. Alcohol markers. I don't remember which one I did. Those are alcohol markers. Maybe I already passed it. I've been using a lot of my alcohol markers. Oh, actually, I think it was. I think it was this one that I used these with. And I started to sketch in a little fish bowl for the little octopus and the little fishies. But I was watching YouTube the other day and um and I was just pulling them out to see because I never really did anything like this with them I just used them to to do things like this so I was watching a YouTube video like a little short and someone was making like these little pretty uh what are they tulips with um gouache and I was like 
I didn't want to pull out my gouache and brushes and blah, all of that stuff. So <clears throat> I think that's one reason why I like these is they give me the sense of watercolor, um, but I don't have necessarily the mess of watercolor, if that makes sense, because these I did with brushes and with these. I, I didn't use any extra supplies. So let's do a couple of these flowers. So this is, I wish they had names. They used, on the packaging, it was this plastic packaging when, when I got them. And it had like this A102, and it would say like lemon yellow or something like that. Um, or like fluorescent yellow, this is A101, or sunshine yellow, or whatever the, num the, the, the names are. Like, I know one of the greens is, they call it like, crocodile green, but it says like a, might be this one, 612, whatever that means. Um, I'm going to grab a couple of colors. A106 looks like a maybe yellow ochre. Oh. Um, I'm going to have a couple of greens. That one looks kind of like a basil-y green color. This one. Maybe an olive color. This one, I don't know, it looks like maybe like grass green. Um, so yeah, I'm doing it too. That's another green. Let me grab a blue, blue, yellow, peach. Maybe a orange. And what we're first gonna do is we're gonna make room because <laughs> there's way too many of those so here are some greens that we're gonna try and I'm just gonna do a little swatch right here of the greens so we can kind of see what they look like so this is a612 so you can kind of see how they work a612. This is 621. Yeah, it's kind of a basil y color. Is that right? This one kind of looks like a green grass or like a bright green. I'm not sure what. Kind of like a yellow green, but more green than yellow. And this one might be like olive. Yeah, that's really pretty. I like those two and that one the best. So let me pull these middle two out and not use those. Now let's, this is a really pretty blue. That'd be a nice flower color. This is a orange, maybe? Yeah, it's a pretty orange. I know they have like a vermilion color, because that's what I used for the um, mushroom. That's like a peachy. I think this is what I would use watered down as a skin tone when I was doing the Strawberry Shortcake Gang, except for when I did um, Orange Blossom. There's like a really pretty chocolate brown that I used for her, because she's a darker skinned little girl in that show. So, these are all we're gonna use these, and we might try something with those um, in a minute, but I'm just gonna do some flowers, and we'll just start with the first color. So. They were using, of course, like a brush, like a, it looked like a, a round, pointed round brush with gouache on it. I don't have that, I have these. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go like down, kind of make like a petal, and then we're gonna do something kind of thinner on this side, but connected at the bottom we're gonna do the same thing over here. And then we're just gonna do like a little top there. 
So that was the bottom yellow. Now we're gonna take, uh, let's take this green right here. And all we're gonna do is draw a line, like the stem of the flower, and then use it like you would an aqua brush or use it like you would a, um, <coughs> excuse me, a paintbrush. We're just gonna go up and you're gonna get some variation. You know, it left some. There. And so we used two of the brushes. We have what looks like the beginning of a lemon colored tulip. And I'm gonna grab a, mm, zero, to a zero five maybe? That's a zero one. Yeah, we'll do a zero five, it's just a little bit larger. And all I'm gonna do is kind of trace around the flower. And then if you want to, you can also do the same thing with the greenery for the, there. Look how pretty that is. And it was just a couple of simple little strokes. Let's do this other. This is kind of like a, like a warm sun yellow. And see, I'm just, I really do like that darker green. Let's see, let's go up. Let's do this one a little bit. There. And we're gonna do the exact same thing. I'm going over the center one first. And I'm just putting some small lines. Just, you know, nothing fancy. It's usually the opposite of what I do. Normally I do all of the sketching with pencil first, and then I go in with <laughs> color. So this is the complete opposite of everything I do. And then what's nice is because this really isn't paper for this, but you can make it darker. Let's use this green on this one. See how pretty that is? And see how I'm just kind of flailing the brush. And just see how nice that is. Let's let's try a smaller one. That's a zero five. Let's do a zero three and see how different that is. So we're gonna Same thing, let's just kind of there. That 
one's pretty. Let's do this one, the sort of orange colored one. And basically what I'm doing is I'm just making like a like an egg shape that's kind of kind of pointed at the top. I'm just making some shapes. Let's try this top one with this one, the darkest green. I think it might be kind of nice with this. Oh wait, maybe that's not the darkest green. That's a different green. There we go. Okay, I think it's dry. And I'm just adding just a little bit of shading. Now, to show you what you can do, we'll take that same dark green and we'll kind of color it in the palette and see how it kind of ends up looking like a watercolor. And here, we'll take one of the purples that I didn't pull out. We'll do a purple flower. I'm just gonna get a bunch of ink there. Now, yeah, this has water in it. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna mm -hmm. pick up a little bit of this on this brush, Let's see, we've got that. Make sure we're in a good view. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing. There you go. Now this Arteza one does lay down a lot of water. So we're going to have to wait for that to dry. Let me get the Derwent one out. Let me. Now this, of course, isn't watercolor paper, so it does take it a little bit differently. There we go. Now, we gotta let that dry. You can see I put a lot of water in there. So let's let that dry, but let's do a purple one. Where did I put the purple? Like these up here. Such a pretty color. And it just shows you how that watered down. And you know, these can be however you want them to be. There we go. We'll take that same zero, we might need to use the zero five because that's a little bit larger. 
because it's a darker purple. So we're gonna Do the same thing with the stem and the leaves. There we go. Look how pretty those are. Uh, let's do a blue one since we haven't done a blue one yet. Just kind of making some shapes. That one looks kind of lousy, so we'll do another one right next to it. We'll kind of see when <laughs> those don't look very good. <laughs> and again, you know, the lines that we do will help make them better, give them some definition. We'll use the zero three. So we're gonna this one we gave it a little more character. And if you feel you made it a little too wide you can go in with the uh, black and it'll kind of give it like a shadow effect. And also, if you don't like this white here, you can always go in and give it a little bit more color. There's nothing wrong with that. But let's give it a little of that detail. Let's define the stem a bit. nothing right and there's nothing wrong do it however you want to do it okay the stem is dry let's go in and do the stem actually let's use the zero five and all I'm gonna do is just quickly Go over that. Now you can do this with watercolors. You can do this with, oh, here. This is one of the Daniel Smith watercolor sticks. This is, um, oh, it's a really beautiful color. New Gamboge. Let me. Put a little in there, just kind of. It's um watercolor in a stick form. And so I'm just gonna put a little in this palette by coloring it. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this. This is the um, Moon Glow. These sticks are like 
maybe $14, I think. It, it, it varies on stick by stick. Yeah, that one might not be as soft as the <laughs> other. Uh, let's pick up some of the Moon Glow. It's a gorgeous color. And let's see if we can use this to paint a little flower up here. Actually, here, let me. There we go. We got some. I'm going to try to use very little water. So Moon Glow is kind of a purpley, Payne's gray sort of a color. I really love it. It's one of my favorite colors. And let's do one of the, one flower with the um, new gamboge. It's kind of a yellow, kind of like that. It's like a yellowy orange. It's a beautiful color. And see, I have some pieces. There we go. We'll just kind of leave that like that. I don't have a watercolor green, <laughs> so I'm just going to use one of the brush pens. Because I don't think I have watercolors in here. Nah, I just got some drawing and some travel brushes. That's why I had that in there. Let's see. Let's use this one right here. So we're going to... Do a simple little flower. Ooh, kind of a, but again, it's a plant. They're all different. There's nothing. They're, like Shada Campbell says, perfectly imperfect. There we go. Now we'll take the oh five for the purple because it's such a deep dark color and then yep, let's try I did very little water on it. Let's see, there's no right, there's no wrong. Let me dry that. We're just gonna take a corner of this and... There we go. It's pretty darn near dry. There we go. And, um, yeah, we'll use the number five. There we go. So that was just a very simple little tutorial on how you can use, if you have the Zig brush pens, the Arteza brush pens, or I'm sure there's other brands that have copied the Zig, because I think these are just a copy of the Zig. I think they might even probably are made in the same factory in China and just label differently. 
But you can use watercolor, as you saw, and it's just a simple, simple, simple little, little way to draw flowers. It's a way to add your color and then add your line work over to give it detail, just to make it look a little bit more carefree in a way, but still have structure. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, anybody can do this. You can see it's just knowing how your, your brush works or your brush pen and waiting for it to dry because it kind of isn't really dry and it's smearing. But these are pens that won't go through this paper. And this paper is, it's not the best paper. It's mainly for like pencil work. Yeah, it says it's a sketchbook, 90 pound paper. It says ideal for writing, drawing, and sketching pens, markers, and pencils. And it works great with these. So this was my first day trying them. And this is my second day trying them. So even I have improved, you know, just the constant practice. If you want to get your watercolors out and then just, you know, swatch each color and have a different color flower. And over time, you'll decide which ones you like or how to vary them a little bit or, yeah. Okay, so there we are. Very simple tutorial. I hope you had fun and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.